Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeannie and I heard about a peel base that will stay on as long as you want it to. So we're gonna give it a try because I was super excited and curious about this peel base. So this is called Jello Jello. It's actually a Korean based company. And I first heard about this peel base on Emily Susanna's channel, which I'll leave her video down below in the comments. So apparently this is a peel base that stays on as long as you want it to. A lot of people are raving about it. So I was definitely curious to see if it would work with dip powder because on Emily's channel, she did it with gels and tips. So definitely gonna try it out and see if it's working for dip powder. Cause I know I've seen a lot of people say that they really want their dip powder to last a week or more, but they don't wanna soak in acetone. So we'll see if this is the solution. But before we get into application, let's take a look at what comes in the box. So here you have your Jello Jello remover. So this is called one and this is supposed to be when you're ready to remove whatever you're removing, you apply it, let it soak in, and then it's supposed to help lift off your tips or dip powder or whatever it may be. And it actually kind of smells like nail polish remover. So it's a little bit of a stronger scent. It definitely doesn't smell like cuticle oil, even though it looks like cuticle oil. And then this is the Jello Jello. So this is the peel base and look at how pretty that bottle is with the metallic red and the holographic symbol. It's just so pretty. So I'm definitely curious to try this and I will say all the directions are Korean so I couldn't read it. So I'm just kind of going off what I've seen Emily Susanna do on her channel. So it's thicker. It is a gel peel base so you will need a UV LED lamp to cure it. And then it also comes with some orange wood sticks to help you remove your peel base when you're ready. So that's all that comes in the packaging. All right, so now let's get into the application and cross your fingers for me that this works because I really don't want to have to soak off my mani. So just kind of showing you as my base what I'll be applying the peel base to. I do have on some full coverage tips and then it's topped with gel top coat. So that's what I will be applying the peel base too and then as I stated it is a gel peel base so you will need a UV LED lamp to cure it for 60 seconds and I will note this is a Korean company but there are some sites that do sell it it's just hard to find so I'll link down below where I got this peel base from she shipped super quickly and she actually has English directions on her website which was super helpful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply one full layer to all of my nails and because it's a gel I'm being really careful to avoid my skin because I don't want to cause any allergies. And actually typically when I do peel base I usually use you know UNT, Halo Taco or Virgo and Gem they're air dry peel bases. Typically I do two full layers but I decided for the Jello Jello because it is a gel I would just do one full layer and see how that worked for me.
Now I've got one full layer on all my nails and they've got a full cure for 60 seconds. And here is my gotcha moment of, I typically use an air dry peel base. So here I am going, wait, so this is a gel peel off base coat. So gel base, gel base has a tacky inhibition layer. So now I'm thinking, what am I going to do because I don't want a tacky layer when I apply my dip liquids on top because it could mess with my dip base. So I'm trying to figure out how the best way to handle this is and if it's going to impact how the peel base works because it does have that tacky layer. Something that just never occurred to me before. I decided I didn't want to risk ruining my dip base, so I'm just taking a lint-free wipe and some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm wiping off that tacky layer of the gel peel base. So really great if you're working with gels, but if you're working with dip liquids, you got you have to do something with that sticky layer. You can't just dip on top of it. So let's hope that this works. I went ahead and did my mani, and I'll leave the link above in the cards on how I did this one if you want to see it. And then just skipping ahead, I want to show you I'm on day seven of this mani, and it is holding strong. So typically when I use air dry peel base, usually by day two or three, I at least have one nail that's popped off. But these are super strong, so it's a really good sign that I've got seven days wear so far with no lifting. We're now on day 10 and I figured I'd check in and show you that I had a little bit of a casualty. I can't even remember what I was doing, but the tip of my thumb did chip off a little bit. And then the tip of my index and middle finger, you can see it's a little discolored. I'm not really sure if it's lifting or if it's just from me filing when I was doing the mani on my left hand because I do get a little crazy with my file sometimes and accidentally file my other hand. So not really sure because I keep trying to find it and I don't think it's lifting. Like I can't put anything under there. So it may just be discoloration, but my thumb is definitely chipped. Excuse my crusty cuticles, but I just wanted to show you close up where that chip is. So it's really minor, it's very small, but I am a little disappointed that I got chipping. But you know, it's day 10, so the fact that these nails are still on after day 10 is really impressive. And the other ones besides that chipping, they're still holding on really strong, like they are not budging at all. My luck is beginning to run out. So it's the next day, we're on day 11, and not only did the chip in my thumb get a little bit larger, but I'm also starting to notice that on my index finger and my middle finger, I'm starting to get hairline cracks in my dip powder, which my ring finger and my pinky are perfectly fine. I'm not noticing anything wrong with them, but I did notice these hairline cracks that I'm not really sure where they came from and you just be stressed because I am hard at my hands. I'm trying to show you kind of point out where they are because it's really, really hard to pick that up on camera. But like in person, I can really see those small, small cracks in there. But besides that, everything is still holding on strong. I got busy at work and I wasn't able to try to remove this mani when I wanted to. So now we're on day 13 and I'm finally ready to try and remove this mani. So I've got my gel remover, which comes in the kit. And I don't want to say the name because I don't know if that's okay or not. And I don't want to get flagged for anything, but you can kind of read the name. So this is like in cuticle oil type consistency, even though it smells like nail polish remover. So I'm just going to apply a generous amount around the perimeter of my thumb. We're going to give my give it a try on my thumb first before we do the other fingers. So I'm going to kind of let that soak in for a couple minutes and let it do its thing and then I will take my cuticle tool which I have on the left 
and see if I can get in between my dip powder and my tip to see if I can pry that open. So I'm going to start in the obvious area, which is where my thumb chipped because that was exposed area. And so you can see I got that piece off fairly easily. So it just, it keeps coming off in little pieces, but that's progress. So I am able to remove some of it using that remover. After those first initial pieces, I am struggling to get the rest of this dip powder off. And I want to be really careful with that cuticle tool. I don't want to accidentally lift my tip. So I'm just trying to find any opening where I can wedge my cuticle tool in between the dip powder and my tip so that I can remove it a little bit more and it's not working. So I'm going to use a little bit more of that remover and let that soak in to see if that helps loosen up that peel base. And you know, I will say I wasn't sure whether the peel base would work with the dip powder just because I did have to remove that inhibition layer. So it may just be that gel peel base doesn't work as well with dip powder. I'm not really sure. I don't really have like a frame of reference. I haven't tried a gel peel base with dip powder before. So if you have, let me know down below whether it's the gel peel base or this peel base just wasn't working for me. Because I have seen other YouTubers have success with this peel base. They just haven't done it with dip powder. So it may just be me. And at this point, I'm like, I give up on my thumb. So I'm going to try on my index finger and see if I have any better luck with my index finger. And then I will come back to the thumb because typically with the glitters, glitters are harder to remove anyway. So I'm going to see if it's better with a solid nail. Once I let that remover sit for a minute or two, I'm going to try again to see if I can wedge my cuticle tool in between my dip powder and my tip to see if I can start lifting it and removing the dip powder only. So I'm trying to find the area. I'm trying not to stab myself with that cuticle tool and I'm not having much luck with it. I just can't find an opening to where I can wedge that in. So I'm gonna do like I do with my normal peel base removal process is I'm gonna file along the free edge and around the perimeter of my nail to help expose some of that peel base. And I'm hoping that will make a difference in maybe the remover just needs to, it doesn't, it can't get to the peel base. So if I expose it a little bit, maybe that will help in the removal. I mean, that's what I do for regular peel base is I file around the edges of my nail and my free edge and I apply cuticle oil, let that soak in. So hopefully this will work. So now that I've filed around my nail, exposed more of that peel base, I'm going to apply more of that remover and let it soak in. So fingers crossed. And you know what? The one thing I will note about this is I did say it smells like nail polish remover and you do see I have a mani on my left hand and because I'm being a little bit messy, I'm getting that remover, you know, all over my fingers, all over my left hand as well. It actually stripped off the top coat of my left hand. So halfway through this process, I'm noticing my left hand, my nails are sticky and that's because it started removing my top coat from my left hand. So I would say use caution when you're using this remover. You probably want to put on a glove or else you could ruin your mani on your left hand. While I'm going ahead and letting the remover kind of set in on my index finger, I'm gonna go ahead and file around the rest of my nails just so I get them prepped and ready for the remover and then they can kind of soak in when I'm working on my index finger. So now that I've got the edges all filed around the rest of my nails, I'm gonna apply that remover. And again, this was super messy. I really should have worn a glove because I really liked that mani on my left hand, but I just felt like I needed to remove it after I did this because it was just so sticky and very dull looking. And I could have just redone the top coat, but I just decided I would remove it and do a different mani. 
So now that the remover has been soaking for a couple of minutes, I'm going to try again to see if I can remove the dip powder on my index finger. So I'm just trying to find just a little gap where I can wedge in that tool. And obviously I don't want to be too forceful, but I'm trying to see if I can kind of make a gap to get any of that dip powder off. I mean, I've seen Emily, when Emily did it, she was doing tips obviously, and she didn't really have any issues removing it. So I don't know if it just works better with gel, if it works better with tips. I may have to retry this with my tips and see if that works better. So maybe apply my Jello Gel Appeal Base, apply my tips and then dip on top of that and see if I can get all of that to come off because it just does not seem to want to cooperate on my index finger. And that's the other thing too of it could just be me maybe it'll work for someone else because I know not all peel bases are created equal and I know there are regular air dry peel bases out there that work for some really great and actually don't work for me so it, I'm not really sure I may have to experiment a little bit more and see but this index finger was not budging and it was getting frustrating. I mean, supposedly from what I've seen, you're supposed to just do like one drop of that remover, let it set in for a minute or two, and then you can wedge your orange wood stick or cuticle tool, whatever you're using in there and pop it off. So it just was not working for me. So I'll keep trying with the other nail, see if I have any luck, but it's not looking very promising at the moment. this point I was either trying too hard on my index finger or the remover was working a little bit too well but I actually ended up lifting that little corner of my tip which is what I was trying to avoid but I guess it was inevitable so I'm just taking my cuticle nippers and I'm just clipping off that corner because I don't want to lift the tip anymore. I can remove the tips after this but I don't want to pop off the tips and do damage to my natural nail. So I just wanted to trim that so I didn't lift it any further. But anyway, you can see it's not doing nothing. Like I am able to get pieces off, but it's a lot of work just to get like little pieces piece by piece instead of having just like one big pop off that's really satisfying. Can you feel my frustration? I tried for so long, longer than I normally would, just because I really wanted to give this peel base a chance. And every time I got a little chip, I was like, okay, it's loosening up just a little bit more and then I'll get the whole thing to pop off. And I kept trying and I kept trying and I went much longer than I should have. I should have given up a long time ago, but at this point I'm like, forget it we're doing this the old fashioned way. So I'm gonna take my e-file and I'm gonna file off the bulk of my nails and then we will remove the dip 
the old fashioned way because this just was not working for me. I've been loving using these fast foils lately for my dip powder or tip removal when I don't have peel base on and I do plan on doing a full video on this removal process soon but I will leave that link below in the description if you want to pick these up. While I get these wraps on, let's talk about my final thoughts on the Jello Jello Peel Off Base Coat. So for me, using with dip powders, it did not work very well. I wouldn't say that it didn't work at all because I was able to get off pieces of my dip powder, but it took a lot of work and it was really messy. So likely I would not try this again with my dip powder, but that's not to say that it wouldn't work for you because there are peel bases that work for others that don't work for me and vice versa versa so it may just work for you I'm not really sure so I'm definitely curious if you have tried it what have your experiences been or if you do plan on trying it please let me know if it works for you because I'm definitely curious to know how that goes because I've only seen others do it with gel polish and full coverage tips so that's one thing I will try it again with full coverage tips and I will film that to let you know what that experience is like because I have a feeling it maybe just doesn't play well with the dip powder. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching. If you did find this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.